is enforcing the will of God by going ways of God. Any level you want to see yourself on, it will only come by faith. One of the ways to please God is by faith. One of the ways to make God excited is by faith. God is not moved by our crying. He is not moved by our tears. He is not moved by our shouting. He is only moved by a shout of faith. Anytime you begin to please God, you begin to enjoy the pleasures of God. If you don't want to see sickness, you don't want to see shame, you don't want to see reproach this year, you must put your faith to work by faith. Enoch was translated. Enoch changed level. This is our year of new beginning. This is our year of supernatural supply and abundance. This is our year of turning point. This is our year of good things. There is no way you and I will experience all these beautiful things if we don't put our faith to work. I see God injecting faith into somebody. I see God infusing faith into somebody. I prophesy over your life will experience all round blessings by faith this morning I want to speak to us on what I've captioned the power of prayer remember we are fasting for 40 days Today is the sixth day of our 40 days prayer and fasting. And this morning we are looking at the subject, the power of prayer. The power of prayer. What a service we had in the morning from 7 a.m. to 8.30 a.m. this morning. It was great. It was exciting. It was fulfilling. It was life transforming. And even as you have joined me for the second service, which is our online service, I know that you are about to change position through this message. The power of prayer. The power of prayer. The power of prayer. Somebody say the power of prayer. There is power in prayer. The power of prayer. In our generation today, we try to circumvent prayer. In our generation today, we try to circumvent prayer. And I want us to know that we cannot do without prayer. You and I cannot do without prayer. We try to circumvent prayer, but we cannot do without prayer. In Philippians chapter 4 verse 6, Apostle Paul, a man of deep revelation said, Be anxious for nothing. Be anxious for nothing. Be anxious for nothing. Child of God watching me, from the nations of the world. I came to tell you, be anxious for nothing. We are living in a period where there are too many things going on around us to make us anxious. The things we are experiencing in our generation today, the things that are going on around us today, the things that we are experiencing in life today, wants to make us anxious or has put many of us in anxiety. There are many things that are contending with our lives today. But Apostle Paul speaking said, be anxious for nothing. Be anxious for nothing. Be anxious for nothing. He continued by saying that, but in everything by prayer, but in everything by prayer, but in everything by prayer, by prayer, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. In everything by prayer, in everything by prayer. Somebody shout by prayer. Somebody scream by prayer. Somebody declare by prayer. Now, I want us to read the same scripture from the contemporary English version. That is Philippians chapter 4 verse 6 from the contemporary English version. It says that don't worry about anything but pray about everything. Don't worry. Put on the screen quickly. Put on the screen quickly. Philippians 4 6 from the contemporary English version. Don't worry about anything but pray about everything. 
don't worry about anything but pray about everything that is not a poem that is a scripture mandate it is not a poem it is a scripture mandate for some of you who likes who like ram, rhyming don't worry about anything but pray about everything it is not a rhyme it is not a poem it is a scripture mandate it says with thankful heart offer up your prayers and request to God with thankful heart offer up your prayers and requests to God so for the believer prayer is not an option for the believer prayer is mandatory for the believer you and I are obliged you and I are obligated to live a prayerful life to be prayerful to live a prayerful life and that is what I'm talking about this morning the power of prayer there is power in prayer so prayer is not an option prayer is mandatory for every believer prayer is a vital key for the life of a believer prayer is a necessity for a believer if you want to fulfill destiny if you want to fulfill destiny you must be a man of prayer you must be a woman of prayer and watch this the earlier we come to the understanding of this fact, the better. The earlier we come to the understanding of this fact, the better. Prayer must become a lifestyle so that you can lead a stressless Christian life. If you want to live a stressless Christian life, you must be prayerful. If you don't want to be stressed, if you don't want to be fatigued, if you don't want to be under pressure, if you don't want to live in apprehension or anxiety, you must live a prayerful life. You must develop a prayerful lifestyle. And this Sunday morning, I see the grace coming upon your life for prayer in the name of Jesus. Somebody shout prayer. Somebody scream prayer. Somebody declare prayer. Prayer is powerful. It's powerful. Isn't it powerful? Isn't it powerful? It's powerful, Christ. I'm going to say it is powerful, Christ. The power of prayer. Now, Martin Luther King Jr. said something about prayer. He said, To be a Christian without prayer is no more possible than to be alive without breathing. What a statement. To be a Christian without prayer is no more possible than to be alive without breathing. To be a Christian without prayer. Now he continues to say that as it is the business of tailors to make clothes and cobras to make shoes. So it is the business of Christian to pray. So it is the business of every Christian to pray. Wherever you are, receive the anointing for prayer. Receive the power for prayer. Receive the grace for prayer. Receive the ability for prayer. Receive the mantle for prayer. The Bible said, since the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffered violent and the violent take it by force. Receive the grace for prayer now in the name of Jesus Christ to take your miracle by force. To take your breakthrough by force. To take your blessings by force. In the name of Jesus Christ. My prayer on this mountain of favor land. For us this morning. Is that you and I will be baptized. With the spirit of prayer. You and I will be baptized. With the grace of prayer. You and I will be baptized. With the spirit and grace of supplication. In the name of Jesus. Prayer will no longer be a struggle for you after today. Prayer will no longer be a struggle for your family after today. Prayer will no longer be a struggle for your destiny after today. In the name of Jesus, it will become a lifestyle. It will become a lifestyle. Let me hear your believing amen. Somebody say loud and clear. I said prayer will become your lifestyle. Fasting will become your lifestyle. Prayer will become your lifestyle. Fasting will become your lifestyle. In the name of Jesus. 
in James chapter 5 verse 16 very popular scripture confess your trespasses to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed the effective fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much the effective fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much the effective fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much the effective fervent prayer the, so prayer must be effective prayer must be fervent the effective fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much what this simply means is prayer works prayer works prayer works somebody shout prayer works somebody scream prayer works somebody declare prayer works prayer works prayer works now this same scripture James chapter 5 verse 16 I want us to read it from the amplified version put on the screen let's read from the amplified version James chapter 5 verse 16 the earnest heartfelt continued prayer of a righteous man makes tremendous power available such as dynamic in his working such as dynamic in his working so prayer is dynamic in his working prayer works he says that the earnest the earnest heartfelt continued prayer of a righteous man makes tremendous power available such as dynamic in his working this morning I came to speak over your life that your struggles through prayer has ended your affliction through prayer has ended that shame in your life has left you that reproach in your life has left you that worry in your life has left you that anxiety in your life has has left you in the name of Jesus by the power of prayer your stress is coming to an end in the name of Jesus. Be anxious for nothing. Worry about, about nothing. Worry about nothing. Be anxious for nothing. But in everything by prayer, everything by prayer, everything by prayer, everything by prayer. One man of God, the other day said, pray about everything, complain about nothing. Pray about everything. Complain about nothing. Somebody say, I hear you, Papa. Somebody say, I hear you, Prof. Pray about everything. Complain about nothing. Instead of living in the atmosphere of complain, instead of living in the atmosphere of murmuring, rather step into the atmosphere of prayer. The Bible says, in everything by prayer. In everything by prayer in everything by prayer this morning your struggles have ended your struggles have ended let me hear your believing amen i said your struggles have ended in the name of jesus christ your stress is has ended in jesus name job the other day lost everything under one year under one year job lost everything he lost everything but because job was a man of prayer he was a man of prayer job prayed he was prayerful he lost all and recovered all because he was a man of prayer there is somebody watching me today i came to announce unto you that no matter what you have lost you will recover all you will recover all you will recover all may this season be your season of recovery may this season be your season of restoration may this season be your season of recovery in the name of Jesus he lost everything under one year but because he was prayerful he recovered all may you be fruitful this month September is the ninth month of the year and you know when women get pregnant they deliver on the ninth month so the ninth month is the month for fruitfulness there is somebody that God is going to make fruitful God will make your life fruitful God will make your family fruitful God will make your business fruitful God will make your ministry fruitful God will make your career fruitful God will make everything around your life fruitful in the name of Jesus may this season be 
be your season of fruitfulness. 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 And the only way you can be fruitful is when you step into prayer. When you step into prayer, there is time for everything. There is time for eating and there is time for prayer. This is the time for prayer. This is the time to seek the face of God. This is the time to trust God in prayer. Trust God in fasting. Believe in him for that which you have desired for years. And I came to assure you that through prayer, your desires shall be met. Through prayer, all your desires shall come to pass in the name of Jesus. Whatever is a concern to you today, during this fast, God will answer you in the name of Jesus. Whatever is a concern to your family, whatever is a concern to your children, whatever is a concern to your business, a concern to your ministry, by, by the time this fast is over, God will answer you. God will answer you. God will answer you. Things will change for you in the name of Jesus. I prophesy over your life. On this first Sunday of the month of September, being our blessing Sunday, I declare your heavens opened. I declare your heavens opened. I declare your heavens opened. I pray that God will shower his unmatchable blessings upon your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Job chapter 42 verse 10. And the Lord restored Job's losses when he prayed for his friends. Indeed, the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. Somebody is about to receive trouble for his trouble. Who is that fellow? Somebody is about to receive trouble for her trouble. Who is that fellow? Somebody is about to receive double, double, double portion. Receive a double portion. In the name of Jesus, any time God restores us back onto our original position, whatever we have lost, he gives it to us in double. He gives it to us in double. Therefore, if you have lost a child, receive a double portion. If you have lost a house, receive double. If you have lost a, a, a car, receive double. If you have lost any anything in your life, receive double. The only thing you can have double is a husband and a wife. As for husband, receive one. As for wife, receive one. But apart from husband, or wife, whatever you have lost, whatever you have lost, receive a double portion. Receive a double portion. Receive a double portion in the name of Jesus Christ. Prayer is powerful. Prayer is very, very powerful. Prayer is effective. Prayer is potent. Don't be ignorant about prayer. Don't be ignorant about the devices of the enemy to make you prayerless. Be, be aware of the fact that prayer is, is, is powerful. Be aware of the fact that prayer is potent and prayer works. Prayer works. Prayer works. Prayer works. In 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 36 to 38, 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 36 to 38. And it came to pass at the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice that Elijah the prophet came near and said, Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, let it be known this day that you are God in Israel and I'm your servant and that I've done all these things at your word. I love the verse 37. Hear me, O Lord. May God hear your prayers this season. May God hear your prayers today. May God hear your prayers this month. Elijah said, Hear me, O Lord. Hear me. That this people may know that you are the Lord God. And that you have turned their heart back to you again. Verse 38. Then the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt sacrifice and the wood and the stones of the dust. And it licked up the water that was in the trench. Elijah prayed. Elijah was a man of prayer. He prayed. And I don't think he even prayed for more than 30 seconds. 
when I when I did my research, I noticed that this kind of prayer that Elijah prayed, it wasn't more than 30 seconds, but yet God heard him and brought fire to consume the burnt sacrifice and then licked up the water that was in the trench. That was that that was powerful. The power of prayer, the power of prayer, the power of prayer. Less than 30 seconds prayers caused God to rain down fire to consume the burnt sacrifice and to lick the water that was in the trench. If things are not working in your life, child of God, step into prayer. If things are not working in your life, step into prayer. If your marriage is not working, step into prayer. If your family is not working, step into prayer. If your business is not working, step into prayer. If your ministry is not working, step into prayer. If you are struggling with work, if you are struggling in life, any department of your life that looks like struggle, I want you to step into prayer. 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 Watch this. If things are not working for you, it's most likely you are not praying. If things are not working for you, it is most likely you are not praying. The moment you step into prayer, you will experience the power of God. You will experience the wisdom of God. You will experience the direction of God. You will experience the grace of God. Just step into prayer. This month be prayerful. This month be prayerful. Today, I pray that prayer anointing will rest upon you. I pray that prayer fire will rest upon you. I pray that the grace to pray will come upon you. In the name of Jesus Christ, receive it right now. Receive it right now. Receive it right now. Receive it right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Whatever is possible for God is possible at the place of prayer. Whatever God can do, it can only be done at the place of prayer. Whatever God can do, prayer will do. Because prayer moves God into action. Prayer moves God into action. Prayer moves God into action. Very quickly, what is prayer? What is prayer? prayer. What many of us call prayer is actually protest. I've come to realize that what many of us call prayer is actually protest. Protest. Example, people go like, oh God, what's happening to me? Why am I living a holy life? Why am I living a holy life and I'm still not married? And this friend of mine who is not living a holy life is married with children. It is called protest. Many of us, what we call what we think is prayer is not prayer. It is called protest. And some of you go like, Father, I've been paying my tithe. I've been living a holy life. I've been living a righteous life. Father, I've done all that, that you, 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 you have commanded me to do. Yet, yet I'm not experiencing your goodness. I'm not experiencing your love. I'm not experiencing this. Why is it I've done all that you have asked me to do, yet I don't have a house, yet I don't have a car, yet I'm not married, yet I'm not experiencing A, B, C, D. Child of God, watch me and read my lips. It is called protest. You are just protesting. Protesting. It is called protesting. It is not prayer. What is prayer? Write it down. What is prayer? Number one, prayer is a language of communication with God. Prayer is a language of communication with God. Prayer is a language of communication with God. In Isaiah chapter 1 verse 18, Come now and let us reason together, says the Lord. We have a reasoning father. So he said, come now, let us reason together. Isaiah chapter 41 verse 21. Present your case. Put on the screen quickly. Isaiah chapter 41 verse 21. Present your case, says the Lord. Bring forth your strong reasons, says the king of Jacob. So prayer is a language of communication with God. Prayer is a language of communication with God. 
prayer is a language of communication with God. The Lord said, come now and let us reason together. I pray that you will step into the language of communicating with God in the name of Jesus. Number two, what is prayer? Prayer is a channel for receiving from God. Prayer is a channel. It is a channel. Prayer is a channel. Prayer is a channel for receiving from God. One of the ways to receive from God, receive any good thing from God, is through prayer. James chapter 4 verse 2. James chapter 4 verse 2. You lust and do not have. You lust and do not have. You murmur and covet and cannot obtain. You fight and war. Yet you do not have because you do not ask. You do not have because you do not ask. You do not have because you do not ask. The Lord is saying, I have it. But you have to ask me for it. I have it. But you must ask me for it. Matthew chapter 7 verse 7 to 8. Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened to you. Verse 8. For everyone who asks receives. And he who seeks finds. And to him who knocks it will be opened. To him who knocks it will be opened. So prayer is a channel for receiving from God. If you want to receive things from God, anything you want to receive from God, step into prayer. 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 Number three. Prayer is a tool for accessing divine plan. Prayer is a tool for assessing divine plan. Prayer is a tool for assessing divine plan. Prayer is a tool for assessing divine plan. Jeremiah chapter 33 verse 3. Call to me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things which you do not know. Call to me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things which you do not know. So prayer is a tool for assessing divine plan. If you want to know the plan of God for your life, if you want to know the will of God for your life, if you want to know the purpose of God for your life, step into prayer. Prayer opens your eye to see the glorious future God has for you. I pray in the name of Jesus that in this 40 days your eyes will open to see the glorious future God has destined for your life. Also in Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 11 to 12 Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 11 to 12 God said, for I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord thought of peace, not of evil to give you a future and hope. So God has, has a glorious future for your life. God has a hope for your life. Verse 12 says that then you will call upon me and go and pray to me and I will listen to you. So at the place of prayer, you access the divine plan of God for your life. At the place of prayer, God unfolds his divine plan for your life, for your destiny. This morning I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that you will step into prayer and experience the goodness of God. Step into prayer and know the bright future God has destined for your life. So number one, I said that prayer is a language of communication with God. Number two, what is prayer? Prayer is a channel for receiving from God. What is prayer? Number three, Prayer is a tool for assessing divine plan. What is prayer number four? Prayer is a weapon for divine intervention. I love this one. Prayer is a weapon for divine intervention. Prayer is a weapon for divine intervention. There is somebody watching me today. I see God intervening in your life. I see God intervening in your marriage. I see God intervening in your family. I see God intervening in your business. I see God intervening in your ministry. I see God intervening in your situation in the name of Jesus Christ. Prayer is a weapon for divine intervention. We saw the case of Peter from Acts chapter 12 verse 5 
through 12. Herod just killed James. Herod killed James. And the people were happy. And he took Peter before Good Friday, planning to kill Peter after Easter. Now when you read verse 5, Peter was therefore kept in prison. But constant prayer, but constant prayer, but constant prayer, but constant prayer was offered to God for him by the church. That is why a prayerless church is a dead church. A prayerful church is a lively church. Verse 7. Now behold, the angel of the Lord stood by him and a light shone in the prison and he struck Peter on the side and raised him up, saying, Arise quickly. And his chains fell off his hands. Verse 10. Jump to verse 10 quickly. When they were past the first and the second guard post, they came to the iron gate that leads to the city, which opened to them of its own accord. I pray for you today that through prayer, gates will open unto you on its own accord. Effortlessly, you will break through. Effortlessly, you will prosper because I see you developing a lifestyle of prayer. I see you developing a lifestyle of prayer. I see you developing a lifestyle of prayer. In this month of September, as we are fasting for 40 days, take advantage of the season and step into an unusual prayer in the name of Jesus. Pray. Be prayerful. Be prayerful. Be prayerful. And they went out and went down one street. And immediately the angel departed from him. I love the verse 11. And when Peter had come to himself, he said, Now I know for certain that the Lord has sent his angel. God is going to send an angel to you this month. God is going to send an angel to you today. God is going to send an angel to you this week in the name of Jesus and has delivered me from the hand of Herod and from all the expectation of the Jewish people. Any demonic expectation about your life, may it boomerang. Any demonic expectation about your family, may it be cancelled. Any evil expectation about your life, about your business, about your destiny, about your career, about your children, may it be cancelled, may it be negated, may it be aborted, may it be nullified, may it be erased, may it be deleted by the blood of Jesus Christ by the blood of Jesus Christ by the blood of Jesus Christ no evil shall come near your dwelling no calamity shall come near your dwelling no disaster shall come near your dwelling no demonic attack shall come near your dwelling I declare your freedom today I declare your liberty today I declare your freedom today in the name of Jesus who is he who speaks for the thing and it comes to pass if the Lord has not commanded it to subvert a man in his course the Lord approves it. the Lord disapproves it to subvert a man in his course the Lord approveth it not. I declare in the name of Jesus, may the Lord turn all the counsel of your enemies into foolishness in the name of Jesus. You will not die young. You will not die before your time. You will live to declare the good works of the Lord. I pray that you will step into prayer. The Bible said, when the church prayed, God sent an angel and three doors were opened and there was a release for Peter. I declare your release this morning. I declare your release this morning in the name of Jesus Christ. There is somebody watching me. I have good news for you today. The door of favor will begin to open from this month in your life in the name of Jesus. The door of favor, the door of favor will begin to open for you from this month in Jesus' name. The door of favor. Let me hear your loud most amen. Somebody declare a better amen. Declare a clearer amen. The door of favor will begin to open for you from this month in the name of Jesus. There is somebody who is about to experience a 24 hour miracle. There is somebody who is about to experience a 24 hour miracle in the name of Jesus. By the time this fast is over, you will hear good news. By the time this fast is over, you will hear good news in the name of Jesus. 
the door that has been shut against you will open on his own accord in the name of Jesus Christ. The doors that has been shut before you is about to open on its own accord, on, on, on his own accord in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. There is power in prayer. Receive the power to pray. Receive the grace to pray. Receive the spirit of prayer. In the name of Jesus. And every prayer you pray. All throughout this month of September. Shall be answered. In Matthew chapter 26 verse 53. Put on the screen for me. Matthew chapter 26 verse 53. Jesus speaking said. Or do you think that I cannot now pray for my father and he will provide me with more than 12 legions of angels. Let me read it again. Put on the screen. Or do you think I cannot now pray to my father? Jesus had a father and he knew who to pray to and he will provide me with more than 12 legions of angels. In other words, Jesus was trying to say, I know how to make it happen. I know how to receive a breakthrough. I know how to cause the demons to remain under my feet. I know how to cause this challenge to be over in my life. And the, and the, and the how is prayer. The how is prayer. The how is prayer. Therefore, if you don't know how to pray, you remain a prey to the devil. If you don't know how to pray, you, be, you, you, you become a prey to the devil. Let me say that again. If you don't know how to pray, you become or you remain a prey, P-R-E-Y, to the devil. Number five, what is prayer? Prayer is a channel for divine empowerment. Prayer is a channel for divine empowerment. In Acts chapter 4, verse 30 through 33, by stretching out your hand to heal and that signs and wonders may be done through the name of your holy servant Jesus. Verse 31. And when they had prayed, and when they had prayed, talking about the disciples, talking about the apostles, and when they had prayed, they were, the place where they were, the place where they were assembled together was shaking. I pray in the name of Jesus that through prayer, every satanic foundation in your life, every demonic foundation in your life will shake. He says that the place where they were assembled together was shaking and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and they spoke the word of God with boldness. They spoke the word of God with boldness. Now the multitude of those who believed were of one heart and one soul. Neither did anyone say that any of the things he possessed was his own. But they had all things in common. I love the verse 33. And with great power, and with great power, they prayed, they prayed, they prayed, and they were empowered. Prayer is a channel for divine empowerment. The Bible said, and with great power, put on the screen, verse 33, and with great power, the apostles gave witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. And great grace was upon them all. And great grace, great grace came upon them all because they assembled and they prayed. They gathered and they prayed. They assembled and they prayed. The Bible said, the place where they prayed, the foundation shook. And the Bible said, power rested upon them. And the Bible said, great grace came upon them. I pray for you today that through prayer you will be empowered. All throughout this month of September, may you be empowered. May you be empowered. May you be empowered, both spiritual and physical, in the name of Jesus. May you be empowered. Prayer is for divine empowerment. Prayer is for divine empowerment. Prayer is for divine empowerment. John Knox, oh, I love John Knox. John Knox said, give me Scotland or I die. 
He was a man of prayer. He told the queen of Scotland, he said, give me Scotland or I die. And I stand here at Favorland and I declare, Father, give me Sakumano or I die. Lord, give me Sakumano. Lord, give me Accra. Lord, give me Ghana. Lord, give me the nations of the world in the name of Jesus Christ. Give me Teshi. Give me Nungwa. Give me Lashibi. Give me Sakumono. Give me Spinkters. Give me Temat. Give me Klagon. Lord, Labradi Kapal. Give us, give us Ghana. Give us Ghana. Give us Ghana in the name of Jesus. Hear this. John Knox was a Scottish clergyman and the leader of the Protestant Reformation who brought reformation to the church in Scotland. He brought reformation to the church in Scotland. Imprisoned during the late 1540s for supporting the Protestant Reformation in Scotland, Knox prayed, Lord, give me Scotland. By the time he died in 1572, Scotland had been transformed and the Scottish Parliament had adapted the Reformation doctrines, some of the first missionaries to America were from Scotland. Wow. Missionaries, some of the first missionaries in America were from Scotland. John Knox sometimes would kneel on ice to pray and ice will melt. He will kneel on ice to pray and ice will melt. He was a man of prayer and he knew the power of prayer. He knew the power of prayer. Mary Queen, Mary Queen of Scotland, Mary Queen of Scotland, Mary Queen of Scotland, Bloody Mary said, I fear the prayers of John Knox more than all the armies of England. I fear the prayers of John Knox more than the armies of England. I pray for you that after today, that witch in your house, that wizard in your house, that witch in your family will fear your prayers. That wizard in your family will fear your prayers. In the name of Jesus, in your community, any occultic influence in your community will be afraid of your prayers. In the name of Jesus Christ, receive the power for prayer. Receive the grace for prayer. Receive the mantle for prayer. In the name of Jesus Christ. May you be prayerful. That demons will be afraid of your prayers. That principalities will be afraid of your prayers. That witches and wizards will be afraid of your prayers. That occult powers in your community, occult powers in your lineage, occult powers in your home, in your house, occult powers in your in your vicinity will be afraid of your prayers in the name of Jesus. I fear the prayers of John Knox. More than the armies of England receive the prayer fire, receive the prayer fire, receive the prayer fire, receive the prayer fire. I said, receive the prayer fire this morning in Jesus' name. Number six, prayer. What is prayer? Prayer is a disposition of fellowship with God. Prayer is a disposition of fellowship with God. Prayer is a disposition of fellowship with God. In Acts chapter 3 verse 1. Now Peter and John went up together to the temple at the hour of prayer. Peter and John went up. They went up together to the temple at the hour of prayer. The ninth hour. Do you have hour for prayer? Do you have appointment with God? Do you have hour of prayer? Do you have a specific time, a specific place that you go, a specific time that you begin to pray? Do you have an hour of prayer? Do you have an appointment with God? Do you have a time with God where you discuss things with God? Where you interact with God? Where you chat with God? Do you have anything like that? Prayer is a disposition of fellowship with God. A disposition of fellowship with God. P. 
Peter and John went up together to the temple at the hour of prayer. Number seven. Number seven. Prayer is the fundamental platform for developing friendship and intimacy with God. Prayer is the fundamental platform for developing friendship and intimacy with God. Prayer is the fundamental, fundamental, the basics. Prayer is the fundamental platform for developing friendship and intimacy with God. In study of the word, we know about God. But it is in prayer that we get to actually know the person of God. In study of the word, we know about God. But in prayer, we get to know of the person of God. It's one thing to know about me. And it's about another thing to get to know of, of, of my component, of my makeup, of the person of me, everything about me. So through prayer, you get to know of the person of God. But through studying of his word, you get to know about God. So what have we said so far? I, I, we answered this question. What is prayer? Number one, I said, prayer is a language of communication with God. Number two, prayer is a channel for receiving from God. Number three, prayer is a tool for assessing divine plan. Number four, prayer is a weapon for divine intervention. Number five, prayer is a channel for divine empowerment. May you be empowered. May you be empowered in this month of 40 days prayer and fasting from the first through the 10th of October. May you be empowered. May you be empowered. May you be empowered in the name of Jesus. Number six, prayer is a disposition of fellowship with God. Number seven, prayer is the fundamental platform for developing friendship and intimacy with God. Now, very quickly, let us look at what are the secret to answered prayer. What are the secret to answered prayer? What are the secrets to answer prayer in this month of prayer and fasting? For our prayers to be answered, we got to know the secrets. There are secrets in God. There are secrets in His Word. What are the secrets to answer prayer? Number one, you must be born again. You must be born again. It is not optional. It is a must. You must be born again. You must be born again. Jesus was teaching on prayer in Matthew chapter 6 verse 9. He said in this manner therefore pray our father in heaven. Our father in heaven. Our father in heaven. Until he becomes your father. Your prayers will not be answered. Until he becomes your father. You are not qualified to pray. Until he becomes your father. You are not qualified to pray. Look at John chapter 9 verse 31. John chapter 9 verse 31. Now we know that God does not hear sinners. But if anyone is a worshiper of God. And does his will. He hears him. God does not hear sinners. God does not hear sinners. Only people who have a father in heaven. Can pray. Or are qualified to pray. Somebody, I, I, I came to speak to you. If you are not born again, that this very Sunday morning, you will accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior. You will give your life to Christ. You may be shouting from now till the end of the year. You may be in convention. You may be in a prayer camp. Maybe you are watching me from a prayer camp. Praying and shouting, praying and shouting. But child of God, until you are born again, or until you become born again, your prayers will not be heard. Your prayers will not be heard. God does not hear the prayers of sinners. Receive the grace to be born again this morning in the name of Jesus. Number two, pray according to the word. Pray according to the word. Pray according to the word. Your emotion will not move God. It is only his word that moves him. The Bible said heaven and earth shall pass away, but his word shall stand forever. Forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. Pray according to the word of God. In Matthew chapter 6 verse 10, Jesus was teaching prayer. He said, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
your kingdom come your will be done on earth as it is in heaven so so if any will must be done on earth if any will must be done on earth it must be the one which has been done in heaven that is why you have the responsibility to find out God's will for your life you have the responsibility to find out God's will for your business you have the responsibility to find out God's will for your ministry first John chapter 5 verse 14 through 15 first John chapter 5 verse 14 through 15 now this is the confidence that we have in him that if we ask anything according to his will according to his will according to his will he hears us meaning it is done meaning it's a done deal verse 15 says that and if we know that he hears us whatever we ask we know that we have the petitions that we have asked of him he embounds E. M. Bounds said, The word of God is the food by which prayer is nourished and made strong. E. M. Bounds said, The word of God is the food by which prayer is nourished and made strong. Number three, number three, pray from the heart. 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 From the heart. James chapter 5, verse 16. That we read it is the heartfelt prayer of the righteous that is answered pray from the heart pray from the heart it is the heartfelt prayers of the righteous that is answered god lamenting in isaiah chapter 29 verse 13 isaiah 29 13 god lamenting said therefore the lord said in as much as these people draw near with their mouth and honor me with their lips but have removed their hearts far from me and their fear toward me is taught by the commandment of men. Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 13. Jeremiah 29 13. And you will seek me and find me when you search me with all your heart. So it is the matter. It is a matter of the heart. Not a matter of the mouth. It is a matter of the heart. You must engage your heart through prayer. Jesus, the Lord said, if you seek me and search for me with all your heart, you will find me. You will find me. John Buyan, John Buyan said, in prayer, it is better to have a heart without words than words without hearts. In prayer, it is better to have a heart without words than words without a heart. So it is a matter of the heart, not a matter of, of words or of the mouth. Can I ask a question this morning? Can I ask you a question? Is your heart in this 40 days prayer and fasting? Is your spirit in this 40 days prayer and fasting? Is your heart in this 40 days prayer and fasting? Engage your heart in prayer. Engage your heart in prayer. Engage your heart in prayer. What are the requirements for the power of prayer? What are the requirements for the power of prayer? Number one, be spiritual. Be spiritual. Be spiritual. What are the requirements for the power of prayer? Number one, be spiritual. John chapter 4 verse 24. God is a spirit. And those who worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. It takes a spirit to relate with another spirit. It takes a spirit to relate with another spirit. So relate with God with your spirit. Romans chapter 8 verse 5 through 8 talks to us about two kinds of Christian. The spiritual Christian and the carnal Christian. The Bible is speaking from verse 5 of Romans chapter 8. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh. But those who live according to the spirit the things of the spirit for to be carnally minded is death but to be spiritually minded is life and peace because the carnal mind is enmity against god for it is not subject to the law of god nor indeed can be verse 8 so then those who are in the flesh cannot please god those who are in the flesh cannot please god those who are always sinning cannot please god which one are you? The spiritual or the carnal? God only answers.
to the spiritual. So be spiritual. Number two, be fervent. Be fervent. Be fervent. The power of prayer requires fervency. Romans chapter 12 verse 11. Not lacking in diligence. Fervent in spirit. Serving the Lord. The King James says that not slothful in business. Fervent in spirit. Serving the Lord. Let your prayers be business like. Let your prayers be business like. Be fervent in your prayers. Fervent. 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 Somebody shout fervency. Fervent. Fervency is the power of prayer. Yeah, this Christianity is not fanfare, but warfare. So be very serious with prayer. Be very serious with prayer. Number three, be persistent. Be persistent. Be persistent. Refuse to give up. Refuse to give in. Refuse to give out. Refuse to give away. Luke chapter 18 verse 1. Then he spoke a parable to them that men always ought to pray and not to lose heart. And in Proverbs chapter 24 verse 10, if you faint in the day of adversity, your strength is small. Be persistent in prayer and don't give up. Be persistent. Be persistent in prayer and don't give up. Be persistent in prayer and don't give up. Be persistent. Number four, be confident. Be confident. Be confident. Be confident. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 16. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Number five, be grateful. Be grateful. Be grateful. Psalm 100 verse 4. Enter into his gate with thanksgiving and into his court with praise. Be thankful to him and bless his name. Be thankful to him and bless his name. Number six, be expectant. Be expectant. Be expectant. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6. But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe. Believe, believe, be expectant, believe. Must believe that he is. And that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Mark chapter 11 verse 24. Mark 11 24. Therefore I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe. When you pray, believe. When you pray, believe. Believe that you receive them and you will have them. Believe that you receive them and you will have them. Now, what is the power of prayer? What is the power of prayer? What is the power of prayer? Number one, at the place of prayer, we enforce the rule of God. At the place of prayer, we enforce the rule of God. This month, you will enforce the rule of God in your life. Whether it's over your life, your family, or community. That means you dethrone the throne of evil. You dethrone the throne of evil. So at the place of prayer, we enforce the rule of God. Matthew chapter 6 verse 10. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Number two, the establishment of the will of God. The establishment of the will of God. What God wants is what is being done on this earth. The establishment of the will of God. Matthew 6, 10. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Number three, what is the power of prayer? Number three, the establishment of supernatural supplies. I pray for you today. This month, you will experience supernatural supplies. Matthew 6, 11. Give us this day our daily bread. Supernatural supplies are real and it comes at the place of prayer. Number four, the renewal of the altar of consecration. The renewal of the altar of consecration. The renewal of the altar of consecration. Matthew chapter 6 verse 14. For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly father will also forgive you. The renewal of the altar of consecration. And number five, the frustration of the traps and snares of the enemy. The frustration of the traps and snares of the enemy. Matthew 6 13. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from evil. But deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. Finally, 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 finally. What is the major hindrance to prayer? What is the major hindrance to prayer? Number one, sin. Number two, sin. Number three, sin. Number four, sin. Number five, sin. Number six, sin. Number seven, sin. What is the major hindrance to prayer? Sin. Remember David in Psalm 66 verse 18. Put on the screen. David in Psalm 66 verse 18 said, If I regard iniquity in my heart, 
the Lord will not hear. If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear. Iniquity is not immorality, as it were. It is simply missing the mark, missing the mark, missing the mark. So David said, if I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. In Isaiah chapter 59, verse 1 and 2, Isaiah 59, 1 and 2, Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened, that it cannot save, nor his ear heavy, that it cannot hear. But your iniquities have separated you from your God, and your sins have hidden his face from you, so that he will not hear, so that he will not hear. Hear me, child of God. Prayer will make a man cease. This is a profound statement. I want to end my message with prayer will make a man cease from sin or sin will entice a man to cease from prayer prayer will make a man cease from sin or sin will entice a man to cease from prayer in other words it is possible to live a sinless life and it is possible to live a sinful life. In Genesis chapter 5 verse 22, Enoch walked with God faithfully for 300 years. Enoch, 300 years, he walked faithfully with God. I pray for you this beautiful Sunday afternoon that grace will come upon you to be faithful. Grace will come upon you to live well. Grace will come upon you to have a right standing with God in the name of Jesus Christ. What have we said so far? Remember the message is titled, The Power of Prayer. The Power of Prayer. The Power of Prayer. Then I said some few things as my introductory as, for, as my introduction for the sermon, then I define what is prayer. Number one, I said, prayer is a language of communication with God. Number two, prayer is a channel for receiving from God. Put on the screen. Number three, I said, prayer is a tool for assessing divine plan. Number four, prayer is a weapon for divine intervention. Number five, prayer is a channel for divine empowerment. Number six, prayer is a disposition of fellowship with God. Number Number seven, I said prayer is the fundamental platform for developing friendship and intimacy with God. Then we moved on to answering this question. What are the secrets to answer prayer? What are the secrets to answer prayer? Number one, I said you must be born again. Number two, I said pray according to the word. Number three, I said pray from the heart. Then we moved on to what are the requirements for the power of prayer. What are the requirements for the power of prayer? Number one, be spiritual. Number two, be fervent. Number three, be persistent. Number four, be confident. Number five, be grateful. Number six, be expectant. Then we moved on to what is the power of prayer? Number one, at the place of prayer, we enforce the rule of God. Number two, the establishment of the will of God. Number three, the establishment of supernatural supplies. Number four, the renewal of the altar consecration. Number five, the frustration of the traps and the snares of the enemy. And finally, what is the major hindrance to prayer? Sin, sin, sin. Is enforcing the will of God by going the ways of God. Any level you want to see yourself on, it will only come by faith. One of the ways to please God is by faith. One of the ways to make God excited is by faith. God is not moved by our crying. He's not moved by our tears. He's not moved by our shouting. He's only moved by a shout of faith. Any time you begin to please God, you begin to enjoy the pleasures of God. If you don't want to see sickness, you don't want to see shame, you don't want to see reproach this year, you must put your faith to work. By faith, 
Enoch was translated. Enoch changed level. This is our year of new beginning. This is our year of supernatural supply and abundance. This is our year of turning point. This is our year of good things. There is no way you and I will experience all these beautiful things if we don't put our faith to work. I see God injecting faith into somebody. I see God infusing faith into somebody. I prophesy over your life. You will experience all round blessings by faith.